The police is your friend. That is a familiar phrase, right? Well, many Nigerians believe it was coined to reflect the crucial role of the police in the protection of lives and property. And many enjoyed the idea of running to the police for safety in time of trouble. However, over the years, many Nigerians developed or formed a different opinion about the police. And this is connected to the frequent stories of brutality and abuse of firearms in the discharge of their duties in some quarters. So, what went wrong in the rapport between the police and the people? Can you drive out in the evening, late into the night, and still count on the policeman in your neighborhood? These are the issues and we will be looking at them on the program today, Nigeria Today. Thanks for joining us. I am Joy Usiago. The program is Nigeria Today and our topic is police and civilian relations. With me in the studio to discuss the issue is the acting DSP and police relations, DCP, I beg your pardon, and uh, police relations officer, Jimo Moshud. And also in the studio, we have a security expert, Dr. Mrs. Folake Joy Yuba. You're both welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you having for us here. Thanks. Okay, I'll start with DCP uh, uh, Public Relations Officer Jim Omoshud. You are not new to our studio. We know how vocal you are about the issue of the Nigerian police and the public. And so here we are today. Let's start this way. You know, a lot of people are used to the phrase, the police is your friend. Can we still say the police is our friend? Yes, yes. It's uh, uh, practicable and uh, it's what we've been witnessing that uh, police is your friend and uh, we've been working hard to sustain that. Uh, there's no doubt that if you look at the phrase, uh, we call it slogan, uh, it's so the tendency in the institution that desire friendship with the people. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, an agency like the Nigerian Police Force, they have to grapple with the responsibility uh, of subject to public opinion. We have to grapple with the responsibility of constantly educating the public on their role and what they do in the society and for people to know. Uh, there's no doubt also that we police by culture. The culture of the people will determine how you police them, how you draw your police by policing priority <coughs> and how they are being implemented. Uh, the Nigerian as a whole has over 200 or something, 20 ethnic groups and uh, spread across 36 states and they have city making 37 formation of a state. And you know, people with diverse culture from different backgrounds, uh, issue of security, they see it has been different uh, from the localities. So we draw a priority based on the concern because uh, what is of uh, cr a criminal, what, what is criminal activity, for example, in Lagos, uh, uh, when you go to a, maybe a state like Sokoto or you take Cross River or you probably go to Enugu, you have diversity in the culture of the people. So, and that is why the phrase of police is your friend is what is the framework for what we are using to get in there to the public and for them to know that they have to partner with the police in securing them. Uh, if you go deep down, like uh, the, when, when you are coming up with the intro, you discover that, uh, like you said in the past, people have a lot of trust in the police force. They still have it up till now. But now, uh, at this, because of the modernization and uh, the development in the society, especially uh, the need to strengthen the infrastructure. Uh, in the past, we have a sensible population in the country, and it's quite easy uh, to draw some policing plan that will be effective throughout the country. Now you have more populations, and uh, maybe you have deficit in infrastructure, for example, and policing cannot work in isolation. Uh, it has to work with adequate planning, because in every point where you have uh, done your crime, what we call crime mapping, or what are the concern of the, uh, the, the crime concern of the people, you have to ensure that whatever is the operational strategies, a key into that to ensure that you fashion out the crime prevention and control strategy in place uh, to prevent and detect crime. Then for those kind that cannot be prevented, I uh, use adequate and prompt detection to be able to serve as deterrent to who would be criminal. So by and large, uh, we are doing well, but there's still area 
where we need to improve upon. Um, that is why when the Inspector General of Police, IGP Brian Puto, it is MP, MNI came on board, I uh, introduced what we call the Eminent Persons Forum. Uh, though we have the uh, PCRC, the Police Committee Relations Committee, in every state, in every locality across the country. But the um, set up the eminent persons forums to bring in uh, the those retired police officers, retired military officers, traditional rulers, the artisans, and even the lowest in the, in the community to be able to know that they have a role to play. Anyway, as an we'll, we'll, to uh, we'll come to the issue of engagement with uh, uh, civilians and also what you're doing to ensure that you stay at the top of your game. We'll come back to that in the course of our conversation. Let me go quickly to uh, Dr. Joy Yuba. And I want you to also look at the same uh, uh, slogan of the police that I started with when I spoke with a DCP earlier uh, on the police being your friend. Yes. You are a security expert. I mean, can we still look at that uh, uh, phrase and say that, yes, we can hang on to it? Oh, yes, you can. But um, it's relative, really. Um, it depends on what angle you're looking at it from. The in formation terms of safety of lives, protection of oh, lives. They're doing and a property. great job, no doubt about that. Without them, none of us would be able to sleep. None of us would. We don't know what would have happened in this country without the police. So they're doing a great job. But I know that in the midst of 12 disciples, there was one Judas. So there would be bad eggs. That's very natural. And like he has said, um, because of the different cultures and different beliefs and so on, the police have actually been drawn from different tribes across the nation. So they can't have the same concept of life and even the job they do because they grew up from different areas. So they have different understanding. So you can't expect that all of them will be compliant to the rules and regulations of the well, the Dr. Judge, I'm finding it very difficult to buy into that because if you look, okay, let's take for instance some, some developed economies. Let me take for instance Canada because I can speak for Canada from what I've seen so far. It's a multicultural society like mm. Nigeria and of course in terms of picking uh, people who serve uh, in, in their security, uh, let's say, let me call it police for now, of course they make sure they get a reflection of people from different provinces, uh, different backgrounds even migrants and all that but you hardly hear of that happening so can we liken this to the issue of proper training exactly. rather than falling back to the particular uh, ethnic group these people come from okay fine you are absolutely right they need to be trained and retrained and retrained capacity building is something that must be emphasized that's multicultural kind of crisis that we manage in the police is a reflection of what happens naturally all over the country. We are managing a lot of crises and the police is a reflection of what is going on in all sectors of this country. But with, build, with capacity building, they will be trained and retained. We, we, we expect to have a better result at the end of the day. We are, um, everybody is work in progress. So we need to give them a chance, but they need to step up the game. They need to be trained and retrained. That must be emphasized. Then again, they also need to be better equipped. They need a lot of equipment to work. Apart from intelligence, they must be properly equipped. Because if you don't have the tools to fight, you just go and waste your life. So the government needs to inject more money into the police force so that they can meet up with the challenges of crimes in this society. All right, thank you, Dr. Joy. DCP Moshu, these are issues we hear over time, each time we have a challenge uh, with the police. Oh, you hear stuff like, they, 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 in terms of funding, we're not doing well in terms of funding the Nigerian police. Um, in terms of training, we're not doing too well. Uh, but I, I know that you do some bit of local training and even international training. I know um, twice the police sent people to Canada, to some provinces for training and all that. In terms of um, engagement, engagement with the civilians, how is that going? Because if we have that rapport going well, I think some of the challenges we're having, especially in recent times, would not, uh, we won't witness them. Uh, thank you so much. To start off with, I want to make it uh, clear, though people may have reservations, no doubt, but uh, <clears throat> an average Nigerian police officer is properly trained. And, uh, the, we've been working on training and retraining program. Uh, recently, 
uh, with uh, foreign partner, we just concluded a uh, first series of training for the special anti robbery squad. Close to 1,000 of them were training police quality in Lagos. And these are officers that are already in the job. And as we speak, over 6,000 uh, police recruiters are undergoing training across the country. But we have some uh, um, what we call personnel gap because uh, since 2010, until the recent government came uh, to start recruitment uh, in, uh, last year, that 10,000 was approved by the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, to be recruited. So within that period, you have some uh, some gaps that needed to be filled because police recruitment is supposed to be yearly. And shouldn't have like, been for six years there was no recruitment into the lower cadre of the force. So after that of last year, he graciously approved another 6,000 that are currently in training and will be out uh, in the next uh, few months. So now when you look at our engagement internationally, as we speak today, uh, the Nigerian police force is one of the two only African countries on the management level of Interpol. And we can't achieve that just by accident. It's due to performance. And we are the best in the UN a system now in international peacekeeping operation across the world. So if you are not properly trained at home, it's the same police personnel, the corporal, the sergeant, the constables, the inspector and the officers that were sent abroad that uh, people because they said the prophets don't get much praises at home. Yes, that so the see, same uh, uh, the same personnel with that same level of training that they are see, getting yes, uh, that go abroad and and, 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 and and do wonder and even get yes. accolade yes. and a lot of uh, commendation for the country see, and for the Nigerian the, police force. I agree with you. Now the thing is with all these figures, this um, accolade from the international scene saying the Nigerian police is the best. You know, when this the ordinary Nigerian is not feeling that impact, they are bound to react. Take for instance, in the evenings, how many people can drive out in the evening and feel comfortable running into a police officer? Take for instance, some of your officers who are at certain points where we usually have uh, um, challenges you meet them that it's good to have them there but the kind of exchange the, the 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 conversation you have with them what it leads to is what has become worrisome to people i mean there are certain events that happened in recent parts even yesterday mm -hmm. and i'm sure you're working on that and a lot of people are talking you know, so with that kind of bogus uh, figure you get from the united nations and the ordinary man here is not feeling it how do you juxtapose that with what you're saying? Uh, thank you so much. We are concerned with public perception, like I've said earlier on, because um, it is important for the public are like a mirror to us, because Nigerians are good people. If you do good, everybody will appreciate you, they'll clap for you. If you do what is not up to, they'll call you draw your attention to it. And we've been working on the psyche and the uh, capacity of this police officer in responding to this threat. But uh, the concern, like I said, we are using community policing, we are engagement strategies now because community policing from over a decade now being the country but which was for born but we are bringing a new impetus into the community policing to let the police officer the DPO the host in charge of our station the commissioner police in charge of the command the area commander and the likes to know that you have to bring the people into policing you so that they can have more understanding about what you do because the more we uh, do our best to demystify People not wanting to come to, come to us. Uh, but, but if you look at society, like I said, culture determines how you police people. Mm -hmm. Even from the various homes, uh, I'm sorry to mention this, even the mothers don't help us. Because when your child refuses to do something, say, no, I'll call police for you. So uh, people grow up with That's that mentality. That's because of the current yes. image they no, have no, no. of the, I, I, they let, have let, of the uh, police. If you allow me to finish, like, I think uh, it will be good. Especially, Somebody, no, there's so much so, to talk so about. When, 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 when the mother will scare the children with the name of police. So the children will grow up with phobia, with fear for police. They don't know that police is where you can go to. But have, you, have you bothered to find out why mothers do that? Uh, no, no, we, 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 we are engaging them. And that is why, you know, the PCRC, the eminent persons forum and other opportunity that we have to talk to the community, we tend to let them know that police is a friend. You embark that idea. I've been to so many fora for the youth where I've told that if I told them rather that if your mother said you call police or tell police is my friend. You don't need to call police on me. So that's the psyche of the people. In some community like where you have civilization, it determines how you police them. In Abuja, for example, a constable, a police constable, can make arrests of three to four people. And because they know you are taking us to the station. But in other parts of this country, if you want to arrest one individual, you send about four or five police personnel. So that should tell you that where civilization is at the lowest help. 
then police will take a different uh, uh, different strategies in ensuring that you ensure peace there. Because when you say a policeman is on the wrong side, we have to investigate why well, he's on well, the wrong side. Uh, and we once that is noticed, because we don't spare our officer. Even the incident you are mentioning uh, as, as a, uh, well, Saturday uh, is under investigation. The commission. Well, we'll come. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. DCP Moshid and Doctor Joe. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll address some of these fitting issues beyond the things you, you you've talked about uh, let's uh, take a break now to hear what people are saying about uh, the nigerian police and when we come back we'll continue with our conversation <laughs> the relationship between the civilians and SARS, to my own knowledge is quite different with that normal police work the way the size react to issue is not the way normal, the other normal police react to issue. Somebody can owe somebody money, which is not size uh, uh, jurisdiction, to go and collect the money. Maybe somebody is owing somebody and uh, looking for a way to collect the money. It's not the work of size. Because I learned that size is meant for a special uh, uh, duty. If you look at what happened in Oshun and uh, Ekiti just some weeks or some months ago you will see that police instead of police to do their work to make sure that people vote according to their will they were now the one forcing people to vote where they are not supposed to where they're not supposed to be so we as a civilian they, they are there to protect life and property life and our property but uh, at times they turn to be against us because number one the way we appear the way the way we appear seems to be a kind of threat to them so they at times they molest they talk to us anyhow which is very 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 unfair there is no relationship between the Nigeria civilians and the police because those people I don't think they have sense of reasoning I have had a contact with the police officer around that resettlement junction. The way the guy reacted was so bad. We were even trying to correct him that guy, this is not how to handle things, but he didn't listen. So there is no any relationship between the Nigeria police or, in short, the SAS and the civilians. There is no relationship. <laughs> And there you have it, the voice of the people. Um, we're back to the studio to continue with our discussion. I want you to react to some of the comments there. And I can relate to what the last uh, respondent said because I had that experience last night. You know, that was why I was asking about the issue of training, training in terms of, you know, letting these police officers know how to relate with the people. I was on my way home yesterday and I had that kind of experience and this is me at this level. So, especially in terms of abuse of firearms, you, you run into a policeman and you start a conversation. The first thing he does when he feels that the conversation is not going his way is to lift mm -hmm. up his firearm and because you are not armed, you're scared. Uh, I don't know you if so you much. have a picture of that. Uh, yes, we do. You, we do. As a public relations officer for the force, I receive um, CTREP across the country. And uh, I want people to know that we are doing a lot to ensure that the behaviors of police personnel conform uh, with the rule of law. If you take over 300,000 police personnel that we have, above 300,000, if you just take 1%, 1% will give you about 3,000. So even if 3,000 police personnel is misbehaving in this country in a day, nobody will have a space to stay. That's to say people should know that we are doing a lot uh, to ensure that their behavior conform with the dictate of the law. Uh, I've said this, uh, we have listened to the track up of what people are saying. There's tendency for everybody uh, to be entitled to a opinion on that, but uh, we look at them, we want people to continue to come forward. Uh, to let us know this is what we are doing, not only uh, when uh, the camera is there, so that we can join hand together to be able to correct any lapses that but, have been but noticed. But can, can one walk into your office yes, right now to yes, complain? Yes, you can walk to any, you, can, you are very, very safe. You can walk to any police station and you ask for the DPO that want to see the DPO. If somebody is trying to compel you to tell you the reason why, say you want to see the DPO, and 
All right, definitely. Uh, um, Doctor Joy, is express what you have. You, is, is, is you express so what is your mind, and it to be addressed. All right, uh, Doctor Joy. Yes, yes. Yes. Let's not uh, behave as if this conversation oh, is okay. between me and this <laughs> because it's about the police. So, so. <laughs> yes, but, but yes. of course, we want yeah. to hear your own opinion okay. as a security expert. Of course, you listen to uh, yeah. the sound bites we got from the street that you could see from the girl's face that she's actually worried and and. Mm. and she was trying to express herself. Uh, what is your opinion about this relationship and the issue of engagement, knowing that the police is there to protect Nigerians? Well, it's, it's very sad because truly they are there to protect Nigerians and if they now terrorize Nigerians, it's, it's bad enough. But I think and I believe that actually... Um, I talked about capacity building. They still need to do a lot more training because they need to be trained on how to manage people. One-on-one -on -one relationship with people that they protect is very important. You take it down to the home front. Some people don't know how to deal with their children. So you won't blame them when they go out and they misbehave with other people's children. So it's about training. When you're on call, when you're on duty, you need to have a certain way that you can behave. And if you do otherwise, then there should be um, measures to correct such an officer. But something is very, very important here. The use of CCTV is very important because most developed countries, they have CCTV cameras virtually everywhere. So if uh, an officer is misbehaving, it, it doesn't need to be reported. It's he's seen. And that acts as deterrence. So uh, everybody is conscious that somewhere somebody could be watching. So they tend to behave better. So that's why I mentioned injecting more money. We must, we don't have a choice. If you want security, we must put in our money. All right, well, you know, this, we don't have time and there are so many issues to yeah. address and I want all of them to come up. You see, talking about training, yes. I know I'm a journalist. We know that the police are engaged in training and retraining all the time. Now, there's another angle to this matter that I want us to address quickly before we run out of time. You see, some people also talk about the caliber of people that are employed into the police force. Okay. You see, I, I have a feeling that because of this issue of unemployment, once they hear that the police is re recruiting, everybody wants to go in. Meanwhile, some other people will tell you that there are some people who are passionate about that job. And in the process of recruitment, it is better to look inwards and pick those who are passionate about the job. Because those will be even more, uh, 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 they will be willing to, to, to be receptive to training. What do you think about that? You're absolutely correct. You see, if you have passion for something, you go all out to do it. So it's not right to pick somebody who loves to be a mechanic to come and become a police officer because he's looking for a job. The yeah, recruitment process should be done professionally so that the right caliber of people will enter. But even when you are recruited, during training and capacity building, they should be able to sieve the, away the shot so that those who are not supposed to be there will be you know, thrown out of the system because we do not have a choice. Uh, people come from all over the world to Nigeria and they see what we do and it's not good that internationally we have the reputation of oh, the police. Police is even supposed to protect everybody then you are the one against... I, I've, I've not had the experience really but I know people complain a lot about the police and there's room for improvement. They're all listening as well. All right, that brings me to DCP Moshud about the issue of the caliber of people you recruit for training because I've heard some people say, oh, the police is recruiting. Since I don't have a job, why don't I just go there and get in? So it means some people are getting into that organization simply because they want to earn a salary, not because they're passionate about protecting people uh, and, uh, and property. So how do you see to pick those that can do this job better rather than picking everyone and then having to train and retrain? Uh, thank you so much. You know, we have been doing recruitment for centuries into the Nigerian police force and their standards that are set for people to be recruited. But of late, we've introduced uh, the, uh, an idea of publishing the name of prospective recruit in the national dailies for the community uh, to be able to, we leave the publication there for up to six weeks for community members. 
to identify those who have some certain uh, untowards uh, uh, crime incident that they have committed in the past and to draw attention to it. And the last, uh, the 10,000 police personnel that were trained, quite a number were identified by the people that gave us information about them and they were investigated and they were sa sent out, so were prosecuted for what they have done in the past. Mm -hmm. So we are more beyond that, but uh, the issue of perception is what we are working hard on. Because even if you are doing better, if the mind of the people are saying you are not doing enough, then you still have to let the people know that you are better off than what they are perceiving. So we don't have problem with that because we always find you out. Uh, if you are a criminal or if you are of uh, questionable character, if you join the force, it doesn't take up to three years to be able to get you out. Uh, because, you know, even across the country, people don't criticize us because they say, uh, he's, he arrested me because he's a Christian, I'm a Muslim, or he arrested me vice versa. No. Uh, people don't say he arrested me because he's a Yoruba man, I'm an Igbo man, or Hausa man. So by the time you go into the police processes, all those sentiments will, will, will be removed from you. So, but we are doing it a lot in terms of ensuring that the, the, the right person are picked during recruitment because it's not only your academic uh, performance, we will look at other qualifications that you're supposed to have. Even the, 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 the kind of psychological test that, uh, apart from psychiatrists, we are still kind of psychological test to know whether you are, you are, you are a liar okay. or probably you are not going to uh, put in the best uh, in the job. Okay. So we will be building on this achievement to ensure that we uh, have a better uh, force for uh, the Nigeria. time is up now, but I I, but we want to thank you very much. But I would like you to tell me what you do about the use of firearms because that is very vital in terms of how your police officers handle this. Just in a nutshell. Uh, thank you so much. In less than a meeting, uh, a minute, I can give you a rundown because the first order two three seven give you clearly what uh, uh, the time is up. Just, just when in a nutshell, you can what use firearms. The regulation is there. But if you misuse your firearm, you will be arrested, detained, and investigated, and then with appropriate. All right. We want to thank you very much, uh, Acting DCP Police Relations Officer Jimo Moshud. And we also want to thank Dr. Mrs. Folake Jo Yuba, who is the security expert. We thank you very much for joining us on thank the you. program today. Um, there's still much to talk about. We'll create another avenue okay. so we can continue the conversation. But for tonight, okay. that's it on the program. We want to thank you very much, very much for staying with us. Join us again for more insightful discussions on the program. Remember, Nigeria today is on weekdays and same time you can also watch any edition online at www.youtube.com slash ntnews24hub i am joy Usiago, thanking you for your time mm -hmm.